And you've just heard The Longer I Hold You, the latest single from Majesty Palm. And I'm so pleased to be joined now by Olivia McCosh and Cameron Robertson, who are Majesty Palm. Hello, both. Hi there. Hi there. Really good, thanks. So first of all, what can you tell us about The Longer I Hold You? Um, so it's probably like, I, th I think maybe like the poppiest one we've done, or maybe not, I don't know. I feel like it's very dancey, very like, at, like disco vibes, lots of like strings um, and like big synths and stuff, which obviously we love, but um, like our last single was like maybe a wee bit more like, just like more chilled and slower. Um, so we wanted to like bring it back to like our pop roots, I guess, with this one. Um, so yeah, just a real like disco dancey track. Um, that like the kind of thing that we love. For me, it's it's a real kind of perfect summer song. You know, it really sounds like the kind of thing that you want to hear on a night like tonight when it's nice outside. But I'm fascinated by your influences. There's always things in your music that I love. I, you know, but they're different every time. So for this one, for instance, absolutely disco, chic bass, maybe a bit of guitar as well, Niles Rogers, all of that stuff, which I'm a big fan of. Um, so how do you decide each time? What Do you just agree together, this is the sound that's on that? Is it even a conversation like that? Or, you know, how does it work? Mm, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think we try and make every song a bit different to the last or... Yeah, but still at the, at the core of it, like I, it still sounds like us. Um, but yeah, it's much. Usually the process is I'll start kind of writing the song and trying to produce it, um, and trying to take different influences for us. Exactly as you said, like Julie Power, like disco stuff on this one, um, and just kind of if if it feels right, I'll send it to Olivia, and we try and get a structure together, and then yeah, that's how we kind of go back and forth and we get some lyrics down and vocals, um. Yeah, there's not really like a method, it's a bit, a bit mad, but it seems to come out uh, in a good way, hopefully. <laughs> Olivia, is that the kind of way that it's divided? Did you write most of the lyrics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we collaborate um, a lot anyway, but um, I think like Cameron's like really, really obviously talented with like production and stuff, so he does like all the production and he'll send me like, like a verse and a chorus maybe. And then usually I'll just like write lyrics over it. And we tweak things like along the way really, but that's how we've always kind of split it and how we've always like, like what our writing process is, is that he like sends like the instrumental first and then I'll write over it, which is always like an interesting process for me. I think before we started the band, I always used to just like write to chords or whatever. But I think having like a fully produced track to like influence your writing is like a really interesting way of doing things. So, yeah, that's how we've kind of done it. And when, when Cameron sends you the music, and you kind of surprised every time, because as you say, all of your singles, and you've had a few out, they're quite different. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he uses like a lot of different influences, obviously. Um, Cameron can speak more on it, but um, yeah, every time I'm like, wow, <laughs> this one's really different. But like, we're always class, like, I'll, yeah. I'll, like Every single time he sends one through, I'm like, "Okay, let's do this one now." Yeah. Um, so yeah. So Cameron, you—I mean, you mentioned that you like to do something different every time. Is that something that you set out to do, or I, I mean, are you influenced, for instance, by what you're listening to at the time, or how does it work for you in terms of making the music? Yeah, probably a whole host of things. I go through stages of listening to like different genres and different bands, styles of music. Can be like club stuff, like DJs or like bands. Lo there's, but there's always like in a kind of core, it kind of sounds like eighties and these kind of influences, influences that are always there. Um, but yeah, I think when I kind of go out to make a song or make a track that I think, oh, this might be quite cool to send Olivia. I'm try to just try to think of like what we've not done before or what we've like maybe done a bit of or what we can try and build on in terms of sounds and things. Um, and yeah, just. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's, I've done so many demos, I don't kind of come to anything, but they might in the future. So it's, uh, yeah, just, I don't know, try and, try and make it a bit different each time, I suppose. Do you have a kind of back catalogue or things on a hard drive that, you know, haven't seen the light of day yet, but you might use them in the future? Yeah, like we've got probably too much, to be honest. Um, but it isn't probably not a bad thing. 
But uh, yeah, we've got like a lot of music um, and demos. Like, some of them are like 20 seconds. Some of them maybe like two minutes. They just all, all differ depending how far along the line we've got with them. But yeah, we've got a lot kind of sitting in the, in the back burner if you want. And yeah, a lot of new music coming as well, which is which is fun. And Olivia, in terms of uh, lyrics, are you the same? Have you got some lyrics that are written maybe for something else or whatever that you, that you can, you know, refer to? Or is it always brand new every time? Um, usually, to be honest, it's brand new. Like, I write, like, as things are happening to me a lot of the time. And then, yeah, it'll be fun. It's weird because, like, Cameron will send me, like, a really upbeat dance track. And then I'm, like, writing about, like, quite deep things. <laughs> so it's like this... I don't know, like this contrast of like if you actually listen to the lyrics sometimes it's like it's like quite quite deep and maybe a wee bit like sad, but like the music's like quite hopeful. But I think <laughs> that's like quite a cool mix to have. Um I have like just lyrics in like my notes app of the phone like my phone that I don't know, like like a few lines and stuff that I'll think yeah. of. But usually yeah, I just kinda of write as I go along, to be honest. And, I think that's one of the really good things about your music because if you say a lot of it kind of, uh, not all of it, but a lot of it, you think, well, this is a dance number. This is kind of even a disco number like the track we've just heard. But then you get into the lyrics and there's something not just kind of melancholic about your lyrics, but kind of the way you sing them as well. You know, you've got that quality, but I think that really works well together. Is that something that you're kind of aware of when you're singing? Yeah, I think so. I think I've always like wrote kind of like deeper, sadder, like, lyrics I don't know why <laughs> I think sometimes it's easier to write about that kind of thing than like happy stuff I, I don't know for me it is anyway and then yeah obviously like when I met Cameron and like like we've made quite like upbeat pop music usually um it's just funny how like I don't know I think my like the way I write has kind of stayed the same like I'll still write about those like subjects and stuff but yeah I don't know I think I'm aware of it, like that maybe some of the lyrics are a bit like melancholy, but <laughs> and, and Cameron, when you get the lyrics back, are you ever uh, surprised by them? You know, do you ever go, Oh, I'm not sure this is uh this is right, or do you think no, this is what this is how we sound, this is how we work and kind of trust it? Yeah, exactly. I just trust it. Like I never really delve too far into the lyrics. Although there's been a couple of times maybe now and then on a few of the tracks that we've kind of worked together. A bit maybe closer in lyrics, but I'm always just kind of trusting what Olivia goes with. And then if it doesn't, it's more the sound yeah. that I listen to than the actual words. So if something doesn't sound right in my head, then I might point that out. Um, but yeah, in terms of lyrics, I'm, I'm terrible at writing lyrics. So I'm terrible at remembering them as well. So just... it works perfectly. That's why it works so well. Yeah. Um, on your previous single, Borderline, which we'll hear very soon, um, now, First time I heard it, and when we were kind of emailing each other, the Blue Nile came up, and there's definitely that sound going on there. And they're a hugely important band to me. Is that the same for, for you, Cameron, that, you know, this was an influence that you wanted to, you know, reflect in your music? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I think that's the same, that's the same for both of us. Like, I love it, and I was really a big fan of them as well. And I think just in terms of that song, we hadn't really done like a slower song, if you want to call it. Um, and I think just the whole sounds are like you know, like what we can and stuff like the synths and everything kind of surrounding it. Yeah, um, it's just a massive influence. I think on that song and across the whole kind of sound of the band at, at times that we try and delve into, like more and more. Okay. I mean, there's a band or a singer in Paul Buchanan, Olivia, who could sing his shopping list and it would sound melancholic. You know, he's just got that kind of quality to his voice. Yeah, I think it's especially when you listen to a Blue Nile track, it's like the first thing you notice. It's like that, that, that like such a like an ide identifiable like voice, and um, yeah, I think that's what like makes the music so good as well. Um, and yeah, I I, I feel like I kind of grew up on the Blue Nile and all that kind of era. Like my dad's a massive fan, so yeah, I think we both have like share that love for it. It's interesting. Uh, I I could talk about the rivers but I won't but it's interesting that there again is a band who does a kind of electronic side to what they do which I think it's actually aged well not everyone agrees but I think it's aged really well but they've got like a almost like an old school crooner in Paul Buchanan over the top you know a real kind of um you know two o'clock in the morning what used to be a smoky venue vibe about it you know that kind of feel 
Um, you've released a kind of run of amazing singles. Are there plans to collect them together or for a longer release? What's the situation uh, going forward from here? Yeah, I think um, we've done Borderline. So we're doing a kind of selection of songs at the moment. Borderline being the first and then uh, The Longer I Hold You being the second one. So we've kind of got a, a larger piece of material planned for the, <laughs> towards the end of the year. And uh, yeah, just kind of, we've been working away maybe the last year or so, just kind of perfecting all the songs and all the different sounds and influences and put them into these, this kind of set of new songs, new music. So yeah, they're all kind of linked in a, in a way. So Borderline's the kind of first one of, I mean, how do you, level it, Olivia, how do you approach releasing music? Because it's something that kind of, it's changed over the years and over recent times quite radically, you know, with streaming, uh, you know, rather than physical releases, perhaps. Do you have, do you have to plan how you release it or uh, is it kind of more a, on a single to single basis? I think up until now, it's been a very like single to, to single basis. I think if you listen to a lot of our singles, they're, they're quite like varied. Um, so you can kind of tell that maybe we didn't have like a plan for like, like a set of releases, but like, thinking about them just kind of as like individual releases more so um and yeah but I think now we're looking at like obviously like how each I don't know I don't want to say too much like to like yeah. reveal like what we're kind of planning for the, the don't give away any secrets absolutely but do you have to kind of or have you thought right let's come up with a plan moving forward is that the kind of thing yeah I think yeah I think we've put like a lot more thought especially into like these next two songs into like the sound and like the kind of overall vision of what like we want to project like as a band so yeah I think we've put like a lot of thought into that with like the next few releases anyway. So you don't have to tell me what or when but there's more to come. Yeah. Watch <laughs> this space basically is that what we're yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yeah. And in terms of uh, live shows how does that, if I was to come along to a Majesty Palm live show, what could I expect? What's the setup? Uh, how does that work? Yeah, so it's like obviously I'm like kind of playing guitar and a bit of synths and things. We've also got our friends that come along as well. Um, got a live drummer, synth player, and bass player. We just try and make it like it sound as big as as we can and try and like we don't really want to rely on like backing tracks too much or anything like that. We want to try and like recreate as much as we can live. Um, but yeah, it's always quite a big sound, like fun and dance and big pop songs. But um, yeah, just good fun, I think. And love you anyway. <laughs> and are there plans for any kind of live gigs coming up soon, if you can see? Yeah, I think the only one that we have that like, we can say is that we've, we're playing Transmit in a couple of weeks. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're playing the River Stage on the Sunday. So, oh, excellent. Yeah, we're in like a lot of rehearsals and stuff for that just now to uh, kind of try and bring something different to that set as well. Um, so yeah, because we never really played like a festival, obviously, of that scale. So um, we're trying to like make sure that the set's like as big as possible. So yeah. That's an audience that likes a big pop sound. So I think you'll probably go down very, very yeah. well there. And the people, uh, Cameron, that are playing with you live, do they play on the records or is that all you? No, that's just all me. That's all me, yeah. So uh, I'll do like, all the programming and the drums, play the bass, like sense everything basically, and then, yeah, send it over to Olivia. But yeah, like Martin and Lewis, two plays bass and Lewis plays synth, they're so good. And just like, I think we're so lucky to have them as well to be able to play live. And um, like, kind of, it's kind of shit. Like, we, we wouldn't have got all the opportunities without them as well, I think. Um, yeah, so it's good. Good time. Yeah. I would love to hear what you do live, but also to hear that you play all instruments on the records, which, as we've said right at the beginning, are so different. That's hugely impressive, may I say. That's <laughs> fantastic. You know, um, so we've spoke about influences, and I was thinking, as, do either of you have influences that would surprise listeners? You know, does someone have a kind of death metal side to them or anything like that? I love you uh, nodding our head, so let's go. <laughs> yeah, is that for me, that one? I, love it. I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, no, I love, like, metal music as well. 
I used to be in metal bands when I was like between the age of like 15 to like 20 or something. Lewis, who actually plays bass, I was in the same metal band as him. Um, so yeah, I think there's a, a lot of that kind of stuff which I still use as influences, but no one would probably notice, or I don't probably notice myself. It's just yeah. <laughs> ingrained in me. But um, yeah, I love all that kind of thing. But I can't really get Olivia to scream out on any of the songs. So. <laughs> Really uh, kind of thrash metal screaming. Yeah, yeah, I have to say I've listened to all your your singles releases so far, and it's I've never picked up any kind of metal vibes. So uh, that's interesting. What about you, Olivia? Is there anything that we would be surprised that you you really enjoy? Um, I mean, I don't think I've gotten that surprised. Like, I've just like loved pop music my whole life, and um, and like eighties disco music also. Like when I was younger, I was like quite a big One Direction fan. I won't lie, and mm -hmm. I'm of it. So, um, so maybe that would surprise people, but I don't know. I think I've just always loved like pop music and stuff. Um, You've got to own these influences that, yeah, you know, especially what you had when you were younger. I think because it kind of shapes the way that you you were later on. For instance, I've always been a massive disco fan, even at times when it perhaps wasn't. You know, almost the done thing to do it, but I just love particularly the chic records and the stuff that Niall Rogers produced. I think some of the best music that there is. Mm -hmm. um, well, I can't wait to see if if uh, that hints at what's uh, coming next from you. You've intrigued me uh, by keeping quiet about it. I like that. <laughs> Listen, it's such a pleasure to talk to both of you. I'm a huge fan of your music. I think you know that. Uh, so thanks again for having a chat. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, no, thanks for having us. That was brilliant. And this is Majesty Palm and Borderline.